On July 17th, the sun squared Eris, exactly. And Eris creates chaos and mayhem, typically in the name of truth, justice, rebellion, and equality. Eris, which has an incredibly long, 556 year long orbit, stations retrograde July 20th, 21st, depending on where in the world you are right under this Capricorn, the second Capricorn full moon. Chiron and Aries, conjunct Eris, triggers wounds to our self-identity, autonomy, independence, and overall sense of freedom. These usually stem from childhood, from not feeling inherently worthy or enough. And last, but certainly not least, we have an exact square between Uranus, 26 degrees Taurus, on demon star Algol, and Mercury, 26 degrees Leo. This brings unusual and unorthodox or out-of-the-box thinking, so enjoy that energy. But also watch for irritability and a tendency to speak before thinking, to be reactive and impulsive, and I'll use the natal chart of Donald Trump as an example. It's important to note that the assassination attempt on presidential candidate and former president Donald Trump, how this relates to both the Mars-Uranus conjunction in mid-July 2024 and Mercury square Uranus under the cap second Capricorn full moon. In the days leading up to that exact Mars-Uranus conjunction, there was an attempt to assassinate Donald Trump. This put Mars and Uranus directly on his midheaven within one degree of demon star Algol, squaring off against his Mars, which is exactly 26 degrees Leo, rising in the 12th house with his ascendant, which makes one not only prone to a domineering Aries arrogance, but resulting acts of violence. Likely, and I'm not saying this is his fault, but typically when we have an arrogant or domineering energy, it doesn't attract the best in other people. And Mars in the 12th house can indicate that's the house of one's undoing and death, the afterlife. Mars in the 12th house, especially on the ascendant where it is there, can mean the possibility of loss of life from a sudden act of violence. There's also some energy in his chart about the possibility of being poisoned. At the time of the second Capricorn full moon, when Mercury is directly on his Mars in the 12th house, 26 degrees Leo, forming a perfect 90 degree angle, a very challenging square to his midheaven, very public part of his chart, representing his public image and career on 26 degrees powerful demon star Algol, Mercury would be activating his Mars by conjunction, which can bring an aggressive and defensive nature, especially to one's thinking and their resulting behavior or reaction. There is a high probability of losing one's cool or temper with extremely rapid or impulsive reaction. It makes one more prone to encountering hostility. And we are reminded to choose our words and our battles very carefully over the next few months, as the square to Uranus on Algol can bring incredibly irritable energy. How to work with the energy. Affirmations. I am self-assured, self-disciplined, and decisive. I am mature, and I take responsibility for my own life. I have overcome every obstacle in my life up until this point, and I trust that I can overcome any challenge that lies on the mountain ahead. I know who I am, and I set clear boundaries to protect my energy. I am strong, wise, assertive, and independent. But first talk about some crystals you can use, and I am wearing some yellow jasper today. Yellow jasper. Yellow jasper is a vibrant crystal or gemstone that's known to enhance one's feeling of oneness. It is believed to not only protect one from absorbing the negative energies of others, but to also help one connect with their innermost needs so that they can establish clear, mutually beneficial boundaries with others and with the self. Yellow jasper assists with clearing blocks to the solar plexus, which serves to connect us with our personal power identity autonomy and independence, an overall sense of freedom. You can use this crystal by wearing a bracelet, and here's a little 101 for how to use crystals and jewelry and where to wear them. If you wear the crystals or rings on your left hand, just as you would put a wedding finger, this is because it is closest to the heart, a direct link to the heart. That would be for yourself. So if you're looking to enhance these energies for yourself and to bring protection for yourself, wear them on your left side. If you are balanced in these areas and you feel you have an abundance of it and maybe you want to share it with the collective, you can put it on the right side, which is where we give to others. You can also place yellow jasper next to your bedside table when you sleep, and this can help you from psychic attacks and negative energies affecting you in the dream world and astral world. Let's talk about some of the tarot cards that help illustrate the energies at play. So I'll put them up on the screen as a picture in picture, but I have them in front of me so that I can focus on the imagery. I've selected a couple of cards for both Capricorn and Cancer energy, and I could do more for Pluto and Aquarius, but for the sake of time, let's just focus on the Capricorn Cancer axis of opposition and the relevant tarot cards. 
Now this is from the Lightseers Tarot deck, which is my favorite to use in my practice one-on-one -on -one with clients. Lately, I've been specializing in working with clients who are aspiring musicians, other content creators, people who experience creative and intuitive blocks. That's become like my niche with tarot. If you are experiencing any blocks in any of your chakras and you're interested in hiring me for one-on-one -on -one consultations, I offer big discounts for various things, including birthdays and for regular clients. So I have many clients who prefer two-hour readings. They think of it like therapy and we work through the imagery and the cards at an affordable rate, especially for those who commit long-term. So I have several clients who book me for two hours bi-weekly. Let's talk first about the cards associated with Capricorn energy. I've selected the Major Arcana card, the Devil card, the Five of Pentacles, and the Four of Pentacles. And I want to talk about all of them together. So let's start with the Four of Pentacles. So four, the number four, carries the energy of Cancer. And in this card, we see a woman of nobility. So she is of wealth and status. And she's on her balcony, up on her high horse, you might say. There's a village down below and she's like looking over her shoulder down at them and clutching her purse, clutching her wealth very closely. She's not sharing it with others. This is a reminder that abundance is attracted by being generous. We must share in order to receive. That is how give and take works. And it doesn't have to be 50-50, but you want it to be as even as possible. 60-40 is acceptable too. If you're someone like me, I will always be okay with giving a little bit more than I get. Probably all of that Libra and 12th house energy. We also have the Five of Pentacles, which I'd like to talk about the Five of Pentacles and the Devil card together, because both speak to overcoming limiting thought patterns and unconscious blocks or addictions. The Devil card shows the Devil, and this is the major arcana associated with Capricorn energy, it shows a toxic masculine figure, and I'm calling him toxic because he has devil horns, he's got some tattoos that also indicate ties to like a devilish nature, and he's got this tendency to manipulate and to strategically need the upper hand, right? And he's holding himself like a marionette puppet by strings. If you look at the traditional Rider Wade imagery of this devil card, you'll see that it has a masculine and a feminine character, similar to Adam and Eve, with a devil character in the middle. And each of those characters has, I don't think I can say the N-O-O-S-E word on YouTube, but they have that around their neck, which is loose enough that they could themselves release it once they realize they have the power to do so. And that's the significance of the devil card. It is attachment, addiction, but ultimately freedom from addiction and attachment. Once we learn that we have the power, this is where the five of pentacles comes into play, once we learn that, look, she's upset, she's downtrodden, she's stuck in her lack mentality, she's ruminating, but she can't get through the door here. The key is right there. She could stand up, pick up the key, and unlock the door. You alone have the power to release yourself from limiting thoughts and addictions once you bring it to the light of consciousness for healing. Now with Cancer Energy, the Four of Cups is one of my favorite cards for explaining Cancer Energy. Cancer Energy, it's lovely, it's beautiful, it's compassionate, but it's so sensitive. And it has a tendency to take things really personally. And what can happen when we do this, and I'm saying this as a, as a we because my midheaven's in Cancer, I was raised by a Cancerian woman. We have a tendency to create stories from our perceptions that might not even be true. And we can hold on to these stories for so much longer than is healthy. Remember that the Cancer has claws. So does the scorpion, symbol for Scorpio. We must learn to forgive and release. You don't have to forget, but you have to forgive. And it's not something we do for others, it's something we do for ourselves. Because holding on to, especially the negative energies of betrayal, resentment, anger, is only a poison unto the self. She is focused here on three empty cups. When there is a full cup with literally, it's the pot of gold at the bottom of a rainbow. Someone is offering it to her, but she won't look that way. She's too focused on the past. This is a reminder to shift out of that energy. Trust the universe. You have the power to put yourself in a depression, but you have the power to free yourself from that depression too. You must become mindful of your thoughts, how those thoughts can manifest in our 3D reality and how they can lead us into dangerous paths down anxiety, rumination, and ultimately depression. The major arcana associated with cancer energy is the chariot card, which I'm looking at the light seer's version of the card, which I'll put up here as a PIP. There's a masculine character rushing in. This usually indicates some sort of a 
message coming in. But if you look at the horses drawing the carriage, there is a white horse and a black horse. And this represents the yin and yang energy that we are now called to balance under these under this astrology. It is a reminder to avoid being impulsive and rushing in and to ensure that you balance those internal feminine and masculine yin and yang energies within the self before coming into relationship with another. Thank you for watching. If you're still with me, you're a real one. Drop your current most used emoji in the comments. If you took anything away from this video, we ask that you like, comment, share the content, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, we know that you'll enjoy the full playlist and this additional video. Thank you so much, love you, and see you soon.